Often the strongest willed souls are also the youngest. Frail but tenacious, they astound us with their resilience. For a premature infant, surviving preterm birth isn't always the end of their fight. Sometimes it's just the beginning. Essentially one in every hundred children that enters a NICU will go blind. The culprit, a disease called retinopathy of prematurity, or ROP. Dr. Thomas Lee the Vision Center at Children's Hospital Los Angeles has to be constantly vigilant to protect his young patients. If we are not on our 100% A game all the time, a child can go blind in a span of five or six days. The buck stops there. As director of the Center for Fetal and Neonatal Medicine at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, Dr. Istvan Seri has seen remarkable improvements in the survival rates of premature infants during his career. So in the 1960s, uh, approximately 50% of the premature babies born around 30 to 31 weeks uh, would survive. Now we are at the point where Babies have a 50% chance to survive if they are around 24 to 25 weeks. Survival is one issue, but quality of life is another. By getting better at making these babies survive, we also have started facing new problems. One of these problems is uh, retinopathy of prematurity, or ROP. Retinopathy of prematurity is a condition that happens in the retina of children born early, generally at 29 weeks or less. In babies born that prematurely, the blood vessels in the eye aren't fully developed. As these babies grow outside the womb, these blood vessels sometimes become disorganized and tangled, leading to the formation of scar tissue. In the most severe form of ROP, this scar tissue can literally tear the other delicate structures of the eye apart and destroy a newborn's vision. The retina is the most complicated part of the eye. It's like film you'd have in a camera. Because of how delicate that structure is, if you were to tug on it even a little bit, it would cause at the very least distortion. And if the tugging was hard enough and it resulted in a detachment, you could actually uh, have blindness. Until recently, the technological advances that have helped younger and younger premature infants survive have not been matched in the treatment of ROP. Dr. Lee and his team at Children's coupled two unique technologies, optical coherence tomography, or OCT, and the endoscope, a camera that can be inserted into the eye to redefine the standard of care for severe ROP. Baby Esmeralda was born at 26 weeks and weighed little more than a pound she is now three months old and weighs just under six pounds. When Esmeralda's ROP didn't respond to traditional treatments, she was brought to Children's Hospital Los Angeles, now the only hospital in the world to use OCT and the endoscope to treat this disease. Time is of the essence. When we're making a decision to take a child to the OR, it's, it's a very big deal. The child's eye is very intolerant of mistakes. It's so small that if I make a mistake with my instrument, I could cause irreversible damage within half a second, and then the child's blind. I tell parents that my job is actually to try and keep their child out of the operating room. I'm a very conservative surgeon, but having said that, if you wait too late, you could be in a position where it's no longer surgically treatable. If you were to go in too early and then have a complication, you would wonder whether you should have just waited. I know what happens when you wait too long. So this child is at a very critical point in its development where within a matter of weeks, the baby could potentially go blind. Prior to the OCT, we used the same technology we've been using since the 1970s, which is a magnifying glass and a headset that had a light source on top of it and the combination of the two would let us look into the eye. It's as if you're on top of a 10-story building looking down and trying to read the license plates on the, of the cars below. Traditionally, we use an indirect headset, which is the lamp that I wear, along with the magnifying glass. Uh, this device is called a spectral domain OCT, and it will allow us to image the retina at the level of individual cells. 
And so we can actually detect a retinal detachment at a much earlier stage. SDOCT is the newest version of what we call optical coherence tomography. And it lets you visualize all the separate layers of the retina in three dimensions. And it's important because it can identify even the smallest, earliest retinal detachment long before I could with my magnifying glass and headset. Looking at the OCT, there's clearly a detachment going into the macula. One of the challenges of treating ROP is that the disease can spontaneously stop progressing on its own, making it very difficult to know exactly when and if to proceed with surgery. In the past, where I was sort of making an educated guess as to whether or not the retina was detached and the extent of the detachment, I can now know for certain using this new technology. So the OCT showed us that there was a retinal detachment extending in both eyes, and in the left eye was already starting to enter the central portion of the retina, which means that it's time to go ahead with the surgery. Though deciding whether a child needs surgery is difficult, it pales in comparison to the actual operation where the slightest misstep could result in permanent blindness. There is no such thing as an easy ROP operation. They're always very complicated and very stressful. Uh, retina surgery in general is difficult, and when you are operating in an adult eye, it's as if you're driving down the highway at night at 70 miles an hour, and there's a semi-tractor trailer truck about 10 car lengths in front of you. In a child's eye, it's that same car, same speed, same highway, same truck, but now that truck is five feet in front of you. It's a very tight claustrophobic area. The endoscope allows you to get around that because rather than looking from the outside in, you're actually inside the eye. And the closer I get to the disease, the more magnified, the higher the resolution is. So I can really see all the nuances and all the subtleties of the ROP scar tissue that are growing inside the eye, and that means I can cut it with much higher accuracy. Okay, good. So I'm gonna go uh, talk to the mom. One of the biggest fears is the fear of going blind. The only fear that's bigger is if your child were to go blind. Uh, that first meeting with the family and the parents after the, we've completed the surgery, it's always very emotional for the parents. Whenever we haven't had any complications, we've been able to remove a lot of the scar tissue. It's such a relief to be able to tell that family that the operation's done, your child's doing fine. That's when their smile clicks in and they take a big sigh of relief. This is just the beginning phase of her treatment and her recovery. So it's too early for us to know how this is gonna improve her vision ultimately, but we're hopeful that based on what we saw today, the amount of scar tissue we were able to remove with the endoscope, we're giving this child a fighting chance to preserve vision. When we walk through this unit, I do see fragile lives there, and I also see the opportunity and the possibility that these babies can be saved and they can actually have a full life. I approach every child as if it were a member of my family, and I tell the parents that every decision I make is gonna be, if that were my son or daughter, what would I want done for them? And that way I know I'm always making the right decision. I feel very privileged to work at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. The commitment that the institution, the administration, and the staff have towards these very sick children is phenomenal. And they seek out the best technology, the best equipment, the best doctors, and bring them all to bear. We're the only children's hospital that I'm aware of that has both the spectral domain OCT and the endoscope, specifically for children who have ROP. And the combination of these two technologies have really revolutionized the way I approach children with this disease.